Today on The Fittest Fat Kid You Know, there's no update because I'm recording this early because this weekend is my girlfriend's birthday and we are going away. So this is an early recording, but I am joined by Mike Kroger of Nickelback fame, and we're going to talk fitness, mindset, a little bit of diet, but basically the idea of holding yourself accountable and moving yourself forward. So cue the music and let's get this started. Joining me today is my gym buddy, my friend, kind of my neighbor. It is Michael Kroger. Mike, how you doing? I'm well, Bruce. Happy to be here talking to you. Why, thank you. Um, to start, I want to say thank you for the gift that you may or may not know that you gave me. Last week, Sumo Dan was over, and he brought a thing of honey, oh, yeah. which, is, which came from your hive, which is the first time in my life I've ever been presented the gift of we grew this in our backyard, honey. Well, you're welcome. Uh, my From my bees to Dan to you. Yes. So the, the reason I wanted to ask you here is, um, well, to be honest, I just wanted to talk to you. I, I We don't get to talk often enough, really. We don't. I haven't seen you at the gym. And, and I love seeing you at the gym. First off, you're just this intense, hardworking dude. And as somebody who absolutely loves to abuse himself repeatedly and for extended periods of time. I admire that. And I love seeing that and just the pure suffering. I, I just <laughs> totally relate. Yeah. No pain, no gain, right? No misery, no progress. <laughs> you know, I just, I just kind of pile on the pain and I hope somewhere in all the pain there's gain happening. And well, at the very least, I think you're, at the very, very least, you're developing mental toughness, you know? Mm. So if that's all you get, that's a lot, you know? Um, just pushing it there, putting yourself in the uncomfortable corner, and, you know, turning the lights out and dumping a bucket of cold water on yourself and figuring it out is what we do, right? You, you put yourself in, in uncomfortable situations and, and you, uh, I think you grow from it, even if it's just intellectually. That's true. And the flash dance um, image that I had in my head at that analogy, like I didn't, I didn't mean to take us there. Oh, I just, I just, it's, it's, it's been very long, lonely nights because I've been working and sleeping on the couch. So, so, but, but your point <laughs> that I've totally diverted. <laughs> my actual point, not the, not the Jennifer Gray point or whatever, whoever that was. Huh? Jennifer Beals, but it was still a Jennifer. There you go. Damn, I knew it was Jennifer. I just don't, I, I always fuck up my Jennifer's. Yeah. Yeah, um, and and who who doesn't want to do that? Um, <laughs> for my for my um, listeners, hi listeners, if you're out there, for my listeners, one, since this isn't the, the the point of this podcast is to help people who might be struggling on their fitness journeys, and also trying to point people in directions of what might work for them. Considering what I'm doing might not work for them, I know what I'm doing would absolutely not work for you. Um, you're just you're on your thing. So what is your thing? Well, you know, I know that you, having been to um, Eric, the trainer universe uh, slash university, uh, you know, we both know that the three most important things are diet, sleep, exercise in that order. Uh, sometimes people put sleep before even diet, but um <clears throat> The, you know, those are the three things that are the, the, the biggest challenge. The exercise part's not the hard part. The, the sleep part isn't even really the hard part, but the diet is the whole game. Uh, that, that's where the, the war it gets won or lost uh, in, in, this, in this situation. And, and, uh, and I'm, I'm in, in a constant uh, kind of battle with my diet because I'm, you know, your listeners probably don't know me, but you do. And you know, I'm sort of a, a creature of uh, extremes. Yes, um, we both are. Yeah, it, it translates into my diet too. Like my wife jokes that, you know, one day I'll just be salads and, and protein, you know, and, and proper eating and, and, you know, getting lots of water and uh, doing it right. And then I'll go from there to, um, you know, like Reese's peanut butter cups all day and ice cream and Oh, I hope Eric doesn't see this. He might kick me out of the trust tree. But um, yeah, I, I do battle with it because it's like extreme on or extreme off, unfortunately, for me. You know, that 
that, and that is, uh, that is my biggest challenge really. Cause I can exercise and I can sleep. It, it, that's, that's not the, you know, that that's, those things are not really an issue for me. Um, so much, uh, but the diet is, is a constant, uh, and evolving war. <laughs> yeah. I, like the extreme thing definitely works for me. I am, I am on and I am a hundred percent or I am off at more like 500%. But there's no subtle middle ground. I'm not the kind of person who really can have like, well, you know, it's been a great day. I've been really good. I'm going to have myself this one peanut butter cup. It doesn't happen. <laughs> no. Or at least it only happens one day and then the tumble happens. Well, if there's only one, we'll have only one. If yeah. there's two, we'll have two. If there's five, we'll have five. If there's 10, we'll have 10. We'll have whatever there. <laughs> You're okay. a man of extremes. Um, but so what is the specific of your diet? Because you're incredibly fit. I've watched you work out for a long period of time, but that's not really the working out doesn't seem to be to my eyes or my understanding where you get your real fitness. You are a professional fitness hobbyist. You have a thousand things you do all the time, be it jujitsu, martial arts, um, running down the street, punching people in the face and running away. Just a vast variety of, oh, sorry. <laughs> we don't edit, want to record Yeah, we'll, we'll edit that. Edit, edit that, edit that. So you talk about if you get really extreme, it's just salads and protein. But is it that or is there like a methodology to it? Like I know Eric teaches a methodology. Yeah, um, it, 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 to, 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 for me, the simplest way and the, and the best results I get is, is, is greens and proteins, you know, and, and staying away from sugar and staying away from anything sort of wheat related or anything like that. A little bit of rice um, and just, uh, you know, that's sort of the, the best choice or, or potatoes. Those are the best choices for starches for me. Um, uh, but if I get rid of those other things, yeah, everything's cool, you know, but I like those other things. I think bread is pretty much awesome, uh, unfortunately. So uh, that that uh, is is a uh, is part of the part of the battle, you know. I know. I you know it's when doing like keto severe, which is the way I do it. It's not candy. It's not ice cream. Those aren't the things that really pull at me. But you talk about a French loaf. You talk about a French loaf with some butter and yeah, my heart just that's the pull. That's pretty. And cool. also like white rice last night I was at a, um, I worked like 12, 13 hours yesterday. And so didn't get a chance to eat aside from like, and here's healthy for you. I had like a slim Jim meat stick Ooh. and a handful of nuts. And that was my entire food until like uh, nine o'clock at night. Mm. And I was coming back up from orange and there was a shabu shabu restaurant and yeah. shabu shabu is something I can do. That feels like a treat that is, totally on diet, a bit of vegetables, a nice salty broth and various proteins. But they also offered sushi and it was options. And there was like eel and tamago, which is this egg sushi. Yeah. And I asked if they would make it for me without the rice and they wouldn't. So I had to get it and take it apart. But the rice was sitting there taunting me. Yes. It's <laughs> so I get what I get the whole bread thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're not doing a low carb thing in any way, shape or form. You're doing more kind of like a whole, more of a, like a whole grain type thing. Well, I, I I'm trying to, um, see what happens for me is, is if I try to just be utterly rigid and, you know, a zero carb situation, I can do it. But what's happening when I do that is pressure is building and pressure is building. And that's usually what, you know, that pressure builds and builds and builds until I finally crack. And mm -hmm. then that's when the, you know, a pizza happens, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, I feel like if I just let a little bit of pressure off with potatoes or, or white rice, just a little bit, I feel like that, that kind of, uh, uh, hits the button for me, so to speak, uh, so that I don't have um, a complete crash. <laughs> now, how do you handle this when you're within your work life? Because your work life, it can get pretty um, hectic. Yeah. <laughs> like, because 
unlike a a normal nine to five or it doesn't get to be as far as I can see from the outside, it doesn't get to be structured. And so there's a lot of challenges, especially when you're an all or nothing Mm -hmm. kind of person, Mm -hmm. keeping that kind of discipline when you, um, I don't even know what your, like the the work life looks like in practice, Mm -hmm. but I know there's a lot of running around. I know there's a lot of hurry up and waiting. I know there's a lot of needing to be at certain places at certain times and then immediately somewhere else and incredibly late nights. Mm -hmm. But then you've got this fitness and you've got these physical hobbies and you've got this strict diet. How do you balance all that? Balance. Oh, isn't that the thing we're all searching for? Uh, I, I don't, I don't know that I'm balancing things. I, I know I should be, and that's what I, what I like, but, uh, I, I'm not sure I'm doing that, uh, actually balance. It's a lot of compensation slash overcompensation in doing and overdoing, uh, um, and, you know, of sort of everything. So balance, you know, it, it, it's, it's a tough thing for me to get, uh, balance isn't, isn't that easy for me in, in, in my, you know, my personality balance is, is, uh, something I'm always searching for, but I've still never found. Um, so it, it, but you know, the, to answer what do you, what do I do? If I'm traveling, if I'm away, um, usually that's the best. It's, um, when I'm home, um, living with my kids who love ice cream and et cetera. Um, that's a lot harder. So when I, if, if I'm out somewhere, just away somewhere and, I have a choice. I can eat right. You know, I, because you're just asking people to bring me stuff, right? It, that, that's easy. It's when you got to get it yourself that's a problem. And, and, you know, when you're getting it yourself, usually the most convenient choice is the worst choice. And, and so I am actually leveraging other people's motivation and action to you know, eat right. <laughs> because uh, if it's left up to me, I might do the most convenient and immediately satisfying thing, which is just, well, it's your, um, it's your apple cake, man. <laughs> that, that's truly that that's like, I, I, I'm glad our houses are just far apart enough. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff's crack and stuff's crack, man. I'm, I'm telling you, it's crack. I've told you that before. You've seen. I know. I know. I You've know, broken know, me before with that stuff. I know, and and I have to admit, there's a part of me that feels abjectly terrible about that because <laughs> because like you really work hard. I when when I talk about I admire there, are, even though for the most part, I my I was not raised with discipline, and that's a massive problem for me. Yeah. I admire more than anything else, people who have focus and drive and just the ability to put in the reps and, and, and to work because I try to do that. And I, and as you know, I, I'm just somebody who, when I get an idea, I sort of jump at it knowing nothing. I know nothing about anything. So the apple cake, this is this family recipe. That, one of the many, don't punch the microphone. It's one of these many skills <laughs> that I could develop that I'm naturally good at. I could be this, I could be that, but I never spend too much time. But the apple cake is this family heirloom gem. Oh yeah. And because of that, I like sharing it. So with you, there's a juxtaposition of feeling absolutely terrible that more than anything else, if there's one thing in the world that's going to just throw you off, it's going to be me and it's going to be my apple cake. And yet this is the legacy of my mom. And why should you not partake of the legacy of my mom and pay tribute to her in, in yeah. memory through taste? And you know, you see the faces. You see my yeah. face when I taste that stuff. That gives, that's that got to give you a moment of satisfaction in, in a different way, you know? It's, uh, it, it's, it brings happiness, momentary happiness. <laughs> the day you walked into the gym, took one look, and immediately left, that was satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fear. That was fear. Yeah. You just walked in, took one look. There was that that moment. It was a very cinematic moment because you had that pause, the recognition, the realization, the shift in focus, and then the fleeing. And it all took place in a two second period. It was. I did flee. Yes, that's true. <laughs> it feeds the soul. 
and now that there's muffins, that that was watching the struggle. So so again, I I have very deep conflicting feelings about it. Um, wrapped in with a lot of pride. Yeah. Like, when I can when I can wrap somebody's pain into pain into my pride, that's just that's sort of like a dessert for somebody who can't have any for the next like five years. Yeah, it's great. So yeah, it, it's very satisfying. Yes. So the the people I'm trying to reach are people kind of like me, though maybe not with some of the advantages I have. Because on the one hand, I'm a bit of a clueless pauper. On the other, I have some really good support structure. I mean, first off. Dude, you've got better things to do this morning than to be talking to me. I really appreciate you talking to me. Eric, whom doesn't waste an opportunity, and I know he does this for a lot of people, it's just his nature, but Eric doesn't waste an opportunity to point me out to somebody, to introduce me to somebody. I've got Scott, who once again is dragging my ass like through my fitness. I've got Liz, whom absolutely whatever I want to do as long as I apply myself. That is an incredible advantage. I'd call it a blessing if I used words like blessing, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's truly a gift from the universe to me that I have people like this in my life, but not everybody does. Do you have any advice for somebody? Let, let's, let's give a model of, of somebody, somebody who might be they, throughout the pandemic, they might've put on 40, 60, a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. quite know what to do they don't really know how to get off the couch and they certainly don't feel good enough about themselves to to maintain or even build some degree of focus yeah yeah if that person was sitting in front of you what might you say to them advice or well, motivation i i mean i think that 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 ultimately the the question it's a question actually not not necessarily dictating um something to someone but you know the question is is what do you want and, and you know what do you want what is it if if you're happy how you are then you don't need to make changes to that if you're not happy then in order to satisfy that, you're going to have to do something. And, and that's the question is, is what do you want? You know, do you, do you want change? Because if you want change, you'll do it, right? You will do it. If you want change, but you don't want to work for it, that change will not come. And, and, or, or, you know, you want change without, without, um, without changing yourself, you know, because, there's a saying that when you change yourself, you change the world. And it, because that's, that's how we perceive the world, you know, through ourselves. So if we change how we are, the world is going to change for us. But you have to want something. You have to want to, to make change in order for that to happen. It, 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 and, it, and, you know, it's, there, there's, I, I don't think there's, there's any way to, to, to sugarcoat it. It, it, no pun intended, but uh, that that it it's gonna suck. Glucose. Yeah, oh, glucose. It, it but it is gonna suck, especially at the beginning. And and for people that have put on a lot of weight, like I've never put on all that much weight before, um, so I don't intimately know what it feels like to be working under those conditions uh, of of having all that extra weight on you, and and you're trying to get it off, but everything hurts. Uh, you know, just getting out of bed hurts uh, to, to exercise is excruciating. It's hard because your cardiovascular system doesn't know is, you know, is happening to it. But also all the weight that your frame is carrying and all those muscles and ligaments and tendons, they hate that extra weight, but you have to move it if you want to get rid of it. So, you know, that's the, this, the kind of acceptance you have to have is, is that, you know, it, you have to decide you want it. If you want it, then you have to decide to do it. When you have this weight, it makes everything a lot more difficult. So when I, you know, as you know, I had my, I lost all that weight. I gained it back. And I, be, when I was first began losing the weight, the stuff I was trying to do, everything did hurt a lot because rolling, flipping, trying to pretend to throw punches, taking falls. I'm doing that. But meanwhile, the way I pack and everybody packs on weight differently. I'm almost exclusively into my belly. Like the amount having gained almost 80 pounds over pandemic, like a little bit around this, a little bit, lost a little bit of that sharpness in my chin, mm -hmm. but you're not seeing it here. 
it's all up here. So that means if I try to do jump rope, which I did last week, it's like ba boing, ba boing, ba boing. Sure. And that hurts. And that that hurts. And the other thing that I now have that I'll probably have for the next 20, 30 pounds is my left Achilles, which I had injured years ago. Not severely, didn't need surgery, but I hurt it. I feel that when I start walking yeah. or start doing anything. And for the first five, 10 minutes, it's almost a little bit of a limp before enough blood gets into the area. Yeah. And it's just something that has to be accepted. I'm not happy about it. I'd be lying to say that there isn't part of me that when I start getting moving that I'm like, this hurts. And if I stop now, I don't have to feel that pain. Right. right. But of course, that pain will always be there no matter what if I don't push through it. Of course. So it's a trade-off. You have to, a little bit of suffering now for a lack of suffering later. Sure. Yes, that, that is it. And, and this is, uh, I mean, we live very, very much in a society that's kind of trained us to feel like we deserve to be comfortable and we deserve to have it easy. And we, we don't deserve uh, hardship. We don't deserve um, really guttural, deep challenges. Um, and, and, you know, we're all supposed to be just laying around eating bonbons and, you know, uh, going on social media, right? We're not supposed to, we're not supposed to struggle anymore. And, and I think as a crock, an absolute crock of shit. Uh, I, I think that, that uh, a human without struggle is essentially a vessel of weakness. I agree with that. And even to take that one step further, we're also now trained to look for the easy way. There's always some kind of easy answer. Yeah, the hack. There has to yeah, be a hack for everything. There has to be. And I've recently begun joining a bunch of forums on fitness and, and weight loss. They fall into very different categories. And there are some that are kind of like really strict. There are some fasting ones that where I suggested having a gummy vitamin once a day. You would have thought that I suggested getting a big ass tub of ice cream right. and going face first into it for four calories worth of gummy vitamin. Right. But the flip side to that are a lot of the other forums where what fruit will te will burn off arm fat? It's like nothing's burning off arm fat. Nothing's spot reducing. Spot reducing doesn't happen. Stop even thinking about it. Not not big big picture. It doesn't. I mean, when as we've learned with Eric, when you get down to the fine strokes, it works. But spot training when you are simply overweight will not. It is. It, you're not. If you're if you're seventy five pounds overweight, you're not getting abs, man. Like you just not. You know, <laughs> you 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 gotta work that shit off. Yeah, hell, at 20 pounds, you're not getting abs. Yeah. Abs abs is this, there are people who genetically have them, and yeah. those people are, they've won the lottery. For most people, having abs is a temporary thing that is born out of a severe amount of dieting, mm -hmm. not exercise. You will never, ever exercise your way to abs. No, we make them it's, in the kitchen, not in the gym. Yep. It's true. But you'll find these, all these different, these forms, just filled with, I can strip your body. I can do this. This product does this. Mm -hmm. Ask me about this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know the names of these products. And even if I did, I wouldn't say them because I wouldn't want anybody to hear them mm -hmm. and then go looking for them. Right. But none of these products ever work. No, they're, they're designed to do one thing, Bruce. Make money. They're, they're not they're meant to make money. That's all, that's all these are for. They're, they're not uh, because ultimately the answer is not, hey, take this pill, use this gimmicky piece of equipment or, or you know, drink this drink and, you know, and stand on one leg and you'll start to burn calories. You, you know what it takes. It takes some grit. You, you got to work. You know, that, that's that none, of, none of this. I, I mean, that's outside of, um, outside of diet. Uh, there's nothing. That works except for work. I'm upset to find out that the one like thing doesn't work because I really had. Yeah, been there. yeah. Been there. I, I tried that. I banked on that one. Like, here's, I, I think I've mentioned it before, but my products, my supplementation falls down to this slow mag, which is a slow release magnesium, potassium, a multivitamin, and making sure I'm getting enough salt. Mm -hmm. That's it. No big products there. Everything available at Costco, CVS, or Walmart, certainly Amazon. Yeah. Nobody, no, nothing to market, nothing to sell. Yeah. Everything else I've ever tried has been a crock. 
and, and doesn't work. Uh, unfortunately, that's true. So basically the advice, rounding it back, is you have to know what you want to do and you have to, to some degree, accept that it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But the other thing that you should, I think the flip side to that is, is know that this isn't a challenge that you're facing uniquely by yourself that hasn't been handled by yeah. vast amounts of other people. Everyone, everyone. They, these rules exist not just for you or me or your listeners. They exist for everybody. And, it, and it's, you know, some people make it look easy. And if you, if you watch enough Instagram, you can see all the reasons in the world why they can do it and why you can't, because it's so easy for them. It's not. Those, those Instagram people are working their asses off. Uh, you know, they're, they're not, you know, they, they, they haven't discovered some kind of secret formula. It, it's, they, they put, they're putting the work in. That's, that's all there is to that. I've seen people hawk products. Like this is the exercise thing that they're selling today, but I've watched them work out. I've watched them in process. Yeah. They've never used that thing. Yeah. They don't, that's not what they do. What they do is a very intense, long, thought out process that isn't just some kind of quick toy balancer or whatever it might happen to be. The, on Instagram, it is very deceptive because Instagram is an end result. It is very much like looking at a movie and going, oh, there's a movie. Well, what you're seeing isn't what happened. That's the end result. It's a culmination of years of work, right? Every movie is a culmination of years of work, just like, you know, the Instagram fitness models are the culmination of maybe a lifetime of work. You know, yes. that, that, uh, that very well can be that, that that person has been doing this, you know, their whole adult life. And that's why they're where they are. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just easy to think that, it's easy to think that other people can do things that you can't do. And I, I really, um, I, I try to whenever possible short circuit that kind of, uh, that kind of thinking it's, it's negative, right? It, it's when you give other people all the power, you're taking it away from yourself. When the fact of the matter is, is you've got all you need. You just got to get off your ass and do it, you know? And, and that, that honestly, it, it, it sucks that that's the, that that's the answer. And, and it is just that dead simple and cold. It is. It is. It does sound very much cold and it is very kind of cut and dry because it's a mindset. Everything comes back to mindset. Yes. If you don't have the mindset to move yourself forward, you know, really that was my failing over this year, aside from really bad allergies, but ultimately that created a break in the mindset. And once the mindset broke, then the floodgates opened and despair and helplessness came in. Yeah. And then it was once again, another shift in mindset that became, okay, enough of this bullshit, enough of this bullshit. It's time to refocus. How do I do that? I know I will do some kind of grand public gesture that I'll have to hold myself to and effectively and pu publicly embarrass myself week in and week out to make sure that I'm aware that whatever temporary thing is going on in my mind is small compared to the goals I want yeah, and the steps I want to take forward because I want to have a good life and a good life is not going to be given to me. It will not. It will not. No, nothing, nothing worthwhile gets just given to you. You know, I, I, I know a number of people that are, that are, uh, you know, the so-called trust fund kids. Uh, and everybody thinks, oh, well, they don't have to worry about anything. They never have to work. It's a curse. You know, when you're just given something that has no value. If you have struggled and worked and fought for it, it has value. But if you've just been handed something, it has no value. That's something you're very experienced with because, you know, you're very successful, but you didn't start that way. I believe the story is you started at Starbucks. That was one of the places I was starting. Yeah. I mean, you know, humble beginnings uh, are, are, you know, if you're talking about my story in particular, yeah, humble beginnings is a very, um, it, it, it's, it is the theme, you know, it's the theme of the whole thing. No, you're very like, um, you're very 
like um, there we go. There's the communication we're going for. You're very driven. You're very focused. You're very smart. I don't really trust or believe in the wisdom of a lot of people. I feel somebody needs to prove it. You're somebody who's always read to me as wise, learned. You've come out of the trenches. You've got good information. That's why um, you're somebody I'm sort of like, if you got five minutes, I want to ask you about business strategies, because as we know, I don't have that part of the brain. Oh, well, I don't have them all either. <laughs> you know, I, No, you I don't. But you're the kind of person whom through, I don't want to be here. I want to be there. How do I get there? And you start working your way towards it. And I respect that for you, which is why I wanted, I respect that for you. I respect that of you. Thanks, Bruce. At you? Thank you. Which direction does the respect go? I'm not I, sure I, how I like this... at you. That's good. You respect at me. Yeah. I respect at you. Bastard. Thank you. I like it. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> but it's not know, as meaty there as it once was. But that is the, um, but that is, is kind of, I mean, it, it comes back to the, the approach, right? Is, is you, you have, you have to realize that it is going to suck and it is going to be work. But the better thing to do is take that information and go, you know, I'm going to learn how to enjoy that. You know, I'm going to learn how to like that. You know what the Marine Corps calls embracing the suck. You know, you just, you, you not only do you know you got to do it and you do it, you start to you start to have a little fun with it. You know, you start to mm -hmm. enjoy it. And, and sometimes finding like-minded individuals who will go out there and, and get in the foxhole with you and really get weird you know in some no matter what it is if it's running up a hill or 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 carrying a sandbag or whatever it is you know um it, having like-minded individuals that that also understand the concept of suffering with no end in sight um it, it is it's very good for us uh, you know the, the fact is, is there there are people in this world uh who who some of whom um you know protect this nation Th those are people who know that when they go out into the field there's no one coming to save them. They are the cavalry. So when they get pinned down and they get in trouble, they know no one's coming to help them. They, they don't, they are the last line of their own defense. And it's important to take that mindset in, in your life. No one's coming to get us. No, no one's coming to save us. When you are on the floor and you are, are trying to do push-ups, no one can do them for you. Right. No one, no one can walk up that hill for you. No one can, you know, do those squats for you. You, and, and, and the other thing is, is that you doing it doesn't benefit anybody else either. It only benefits you. So in a way it's very selfish. It's very, very selfish in a good way. You're, 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 you're treating yourself. You're, you're helping yourself. So there's a degree of, you have to take care of yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you're no good to yourself, and you're also no good to anybody else. That is true. And I'm not. And by that, I don't mean that if you're overweight, you're no good to anybody else. That's no, not, no, not no. what I'm saying. But you, you have to be right with you first. Yes, it's a mindset thing. It's not a physical thing. Right. And it's sort of like nobody can do your push-ups for you. And if you're saying to your, if you're, if you listener are saying to yourself, "Well, I can't do a push-up," that's not the point. The point isn't that you should be able to get down and bust out. 200, like 2,222 push-ups. Right. The point is of not. that if you can't do push-ups, then you can try them from your knee. If you can't do those, then lay on the floor and just push yourself away from the floor. You start working on the skill. And the important thing is not how many you did, be it five, 10. Two. Maybe it was one. Maybe it was one. The important thing was, is that you tried and then you came back again and tried again. And what's going to happen over the course of coming back and trying again and trying again is suddenly you couldn't get yourself off the floor. Now you can get to the knees. You were on your knees. Now you can do a full push up. You could do five push ups. Now you can do 10. Nobody starts cranking out 100 push ups. No one. To Mike's point, it's not when you look at hard work as, oh God, it's going to be so hard. I can't do this. It's already over. Yeah, you, you've you've lost. You've lost already. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at it kind of like, well, this is going to hurt, but you know, it's going to hurt not to because how many of if you're like me, 
you're either in pain from working out or you're in pain from not working out. Your body's building or it's decaying. (laughs) And I've always found that as, in as much as the pain is a little bit more acute when you're working it out, it's also far lesser. And for myself, and this, I think this speaks to the whole learning to enjoy the suck. I can enjoy in a weird kind of way that soreness. And it does feel a hell of a lot better than the soreness that comes from just moving my weight around and I haven't done anything else. Mm-hmm. It, it's vastly better. One, there's a feeling of accomplishment to it. There's just that dopamine dump that happens post-workout that is a reward. Yeah, right? you, yeah, yeah. You, you, do you, get, you can't explain that to people too. You have to experience it for yourself. Yeah, it's a physiological reward. Your body goes, okay, we suffered, but in return, I give you this little slice of blissfulness that yeah. permeates your being. Yeah. And that's what a good workout does for you. So it's not just, I'm suffering, I'm suffering, I'm sore, oh my God. <laughs> There's some good feeling yeah. to attached to it. There's a reason to try. And also to Mike's point, if you are by yourself and you're not sure what to do, there are like-minded people in your proximity. I yeah. guarantee it that you could find, and maybe you don't really know how to work out and they don't really know how to work out, but together you figure it out and then you hold each other accountable and cheer each other on. It's like, you got to do it for yourself, but you can do it for yourself with somebody else. And that makes it so much better because it's fun to have buddies around you when it's not one of those look at me gyms where everyone's trying to out piss each other. Right where you get a group of people who really are there together and doing their individual things. And it's very uplifting. It's, it's very much fun. Sometimes you get a clown like me who tries to make you laugh while you're working out. You do that all the time. <laughs> not, ner- not necessarily when you're in mid pull because that's being an ass. Well, that's, but, yeah, that's happened, but you know, that's okay. I, I, I scold you, you know, I, I scold you when you, when you interrupt my sets by making me laugh too hard. <laughs> You do, and I just proceed to do it. Yeah, of course you do. Uh, I, I don't want you to stop, but I'm going to scold you a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your age is. You can start now, and you'll feel better no matter what it is. And don't hold yourself, as Mike pointed out, don't hold yourself to the standards of Instagram or any perceived pressures. You just get there by taking it one step at a time. That, it, it, but the first step is always going to be the hardest one. The, the step of I'm actually going to do this, you know, um, it, it, it is the, that's the hardest time. You know, the, the, that, old, that old adage that the, the longest journey begins with one single step is true. But the part in the adage they don't say is it's the hardest one. <laughs> and, and not to, you know, and not to jump ahead to how hard it's going to suck to break the finish line before you've even moved your foot the first time. It's really, I mean, that's the thing that, you know, is in me and, and I see it in, in my, in my kids too, is that, that dread of, of the impending challenge that you are going to reach, but you haven't even started anything yet. You know, it's, it's, you got to get out of your head and you got to just go, you just got to go. And that's a skill it's developing the skill of, of just simply like, I can think about this for a while. Or I can just start taking the first couple steps and think about it along the way. Yeah. And you can make a lot of mistakes doing that. Yeah. But I learn from all of them. But I get things done and I do things. And this is how I've handled when I was on with my fitness. It very much was like that. Yeah. I was out the door to the gym well before my brain even clicked on for it to go. Do we really want to do this? That bed was really comfortable. We got this nice pillow top. It's new. It's really, it's, it's memory foam. It hugs you. Yeah. It hugs you the way that you remember in your past that, that your, your mother hugged you to her bosom. Um, That's what yeah. this bed does. And, and I've left it. Mike, I left the bed. Why did I leave the bed? I was so comfortable in the bed and now I'm going to hurt. Bruce, I'm, I'm so, I'm so struggling with that right now. Um, I, you know, you know you can call me and I will force you out the door. I, I know you will. I know you will. And and but I need to force me out the door. That that you do issue is that I, I I'm the I I found myself you know since uh, this this big spinal surgery I found myself turning into 
more a little bit more of a creature of comfort and it's kind of disappointing to me because i i'm that that's just not me you know so i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of there right now where i'm kind of you know at six five thirty six o'clock my body wakes up and i i might as well just get up but i don't you know that, that that's something i'm struggling with right now where you know and i've been trying to you know i've t- taught my kids you know that because they were they were teenagers my daughter still is but you know um I had to try to teach them that, you know, just waking up's not enough. You got to put your feet on the floor and stand up. Then you're good. Then the day happens. But if you're just awake and laying there, which is what I've been doing a lot of the last couple of weeks, uh, it, it, you're, you, you haven't, you haven't gotten it. You're, you're not doing it. Well, I mean, when you list the challenge that puts you there as spinal surgery, like, I agree with you. You It's definitely in the mindset. You need to get yourself moving forward. But to some degree, you can be a little a little bit kind to yourself in the understanding that they opened up your back, twiddled with your spinal column, yeah. and then put you back together. Yeah. It's yeah. The mindset, the mindset is good, but you also have to at least have a little bit of understanding towards yourself. So it takes a couple, like, you might have to work towards it. You have it in your mind and you might be struggling with it, but you are struggling working on it yes but again like how long ago was spinal surgery oh it's a year now so yeah a little year now okay so it's it's time you know it's time uh it's time to to get moving and get back to um you know um being myself again yeah back when you were yourself and not this person i'm talking to yeah what was um what would you say might be a difference in the mindset aside from the fact that you've become acclimated to comfort, which is a very easy thing to become acclimated to. Well, the thing is, is that I went through so much discomfort in the beginning. Um, and, and it was ongoing, you know, back and neck problems, uh, for so long, you know, stuff that would put me out for weeks at a time. And, um, then finally I decided to get it fixed. And that process was that, 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 um, the recovery from that was, was not, uh, not one of the easier things I've ever done in my life. No, back surgery is terrible. It really, um, turns out, you know, when your spine is injured, you can't do anything without pain. Nothing. You can't sit, you can't stand, you can't lay down, you can't move. You know, so there's no, you know, not, not that I'm ever trying to be pain free. That's definitely not my, um, goal or my endeavor here it's the the issue is 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 that it's it's this mind-numbing amount of pain for months uh that now i have to i have to stop seeking the comfort that i'm just newly experiencing you know with my new with my new spinal parts uh and i i I have to start to put it to put it to work have you been given a good um training method to specifically strengthen that area or is it something you just have to be mindful of um well you know it it's it's it isn't weakness that caused it to break down uh it is strong that's kind of the problem you know my neck and back are quite strong the it's the the trouble is that all the equipment (laughs) the internal structure in there wasn't able to deal with the level of loading i was putting on it uh, which is, which is the, yeah, that's kind of the problem. So it, it, it again, it, 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 like you said, it's a mindset of, you know, forgiveness for yourself, but also take it easy on yourself a little bit, you know, and, and that that's, uh, I'm, I'm guilty of not doing that. That's going to be your real challenge. You don't, as you've been talking about, it's about, fo- you know, focus mindset, holding yourself. No one does it for you. So when, for people like that, doing it at 50% for a couple months and holding it at 50% is worse than don't eat cake because yeah. you know you can do more than 50%. Yes. You always do more than 50%. 50% is like your 50% is someone else's 100%. And that's hard to not do because you sit there and you feel like you're doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that brings other emotional factors in such as just the general feeling of disappointment yeah. because I'm only going to do 10 of these. 
you did 50 before. Yeah. No, 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 we're doing 10. I have, then, yes, you're, you're, that's very precisely correct. Uh, I've had that internal monologue. Um, actually, it's kind of almost an internal dialogue because, you know, one half of me is saying, like you said, well, I'm just going to do 10. And the other half of me is saying, you're stronger than that. Why are you, are you pussing out? You know, are you, are you being weak? Are you being mentally weak? That's, that's the worst, you know, uh, but because if I do push-ups until they just don't go up anymore, that's great. The, but that means I, I, I work to the threshold of my mental, I work past the threshold of my mental toughness and made it so that my body just couldn't do anything else. Like it couldn't do it anymore. To me, that's a victory. If I break my body so much that it won't, you know, it just happened to me. I just, it just happened to me because I've been out of the gym. I haven't lifted very much in the last little while. I've been focusing more on jujitsu with my, with my time and my energy. And I did go to the gym last week and what I normally could do was literally impossible. You know, like for instance, like where it became the most obvious and I was in like an LA fitness with a friend down in Carlsbad or whatever. And you know, a, a, a thing I like to do, well, I used to like to do, I don't like it right now because <laughs> I'm going to have to build back, but, the, you know, doing a flat bench press, you know, just, just doing full range bench press, chest press. Um, and then as soon as you finish the set, you immediately roll over to the floor and do push-ups, you know, try to get 10 or 20 push-ups in after you've fully, you know, act, you know gone through a set. And I remember I was talking to this friend of mine that I was with. I was like, yeah, so we do, we do 10, you know, 10 reps and then right off the deck, you know, or right off the bench onto the deck and hit 10 pushups. And I got to five and he was like, what's wrong? And I said, I, it, it won't go up. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not going up. I guess five is where it's at. You know, it, it, and you just, that's good. It, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that I wasn't able to do the number that I can usually do, but I went until it just didn't work anymore, which to me is that's, that's the victory right there. If you, you know, we, we, we go to failure to ensure our success. And just embrace it and not see it as failure. After all, um, there are a lot of people who don't do anything because they're afraid of a degree of failure, including working out. Yeah. But if you can embrace failure, if you can, and it's not just in working out, even in professional life or hobbies sure. or anything, you know, if you, if you view everything as a zero sum, I shall succeed or I shall fail. Well, you tend to not do things, but you if you do kind of realize that in this failure, there's growth, change, knowledge, experience, and all of the eventual success is built off a lot of those moments of failure. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier to then go like, oh, God, I only got three. How? How did I only get three? I got 20 last week. But it all begins with one. All begins with one. And sometimes that's all you've got. Well, actually, it all just begins with going like, doesn't matter what I get. I'm just going to give it a shot. Yeah, that's right. And you have to, you have to accept that, that you're going to do the work. You know, that, that uh, do the work. And here's the neat thing about doing the work, even though it never gets, technically it never ever gets easier. It's always hard because you're always adjusting, but the idea of doing it gets easier. Yeah. The idea of being able to put forward, it's really, as you said, that first step and it just circles right back to that. Yep. However you take that first step. And yeah, I really hope that over the next couple weeks, months, that you have more days putting your feet on the floor and getting however many there are, be it five, 10, 15, or two. Yeah, this is, this is my, this is my new goal right now is just to be more, have a little bit more mental toughness and create my own motivation. You're hearing the internal struggle of Mike and Mike is an incredibly effective forward pushing individual. And the lesson I hope you get from that is that even somebody who is like that has these moments has these thoughts, questions, doesn't want to take the step forwards. The difference being he does take the step. It's the key. It's the key. And, and it's, and it's as hard for me as it is for anyone, you know, 
it, 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 to, to get out of bed, to get moving, to get after it is, is, uh, is, is very hard. It's very hard, but you know, what's the alternative, you know, backsliding, getting worse, not getting better. That's just as bad to me. You know, I think, I think you should, I think we all should every day try to get a little bit better somehow, like somehow something get better, whether it's communicating with your significant other or your kids or, 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 or an exercise goal, maybe it is, or, or tightening up your diet or, or just getting stuff done, you know, around your house or at work or whatever, that one thing you've been putting off because you don't want to deal with it. That th this is, you know, this is, this is the real challenge is, you know, how, what can you, can you get yourself to, to move toward your goal? That's profound. Absolutely true. We need to do Thank it. You. Do you have any other? Yep. Do you have any other um, thoughts, advice, feelings that you might impart upon the 12 people who might hear this? <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I think you really just, everybody, you know, I did say it earlier, but I think it's, this is what it all really comes down to. Are you happy? Are you happy where you are? Because if you are, don't change anything. But if you're not, find out what it is that needs to change and do it. I think that that's, that's it. You know, and, and it sounds, oh, it's so easy to say, well, yeah, shit, yeah, it is easy to say. I'm not outside running up a mountain right now, am I? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this thing. And I'm saying it for my own benefit just as much as I am for anyone else's. Because I have to say that in my own self-talk, I have to say that too. You know, I have to, I have to motivate myself to, to, to do that. It all comes down to the motivation. And if you get it from, you know, if you get it from with, without, that's fine. It's better to get it from within because without, you know, it, there isn't always a motivator out there for you. It, it ultimately, even if somebody motivates you, you still have to, to decide to do it yourself. You have to decide to make that first move. And that first move never has to be big. It never has to be the most challenging thing you've ever done. It just has to be something to start. And then you build. And that's what it is. So, Mike, where can people find you when they're not finding you here? <laughs> um, I, I, I dabble with, with um, Instagram, but that's the only social media I even play with at all. And... Uh, do you want to give it out? I'm happy to give up my handle. It's this Michael underscore Kruger 555. That is my handle on the Instagrams. Um, but, uh, you know, otherwise, anything, find anything Nickelback related and you'll know where I am. Yep. And um, I had originally thought that the name of your band came from the position in football. Oh, yes. I didn't. I didn't realize that it was just something you would say to people when you were serving them at Starbucks. Yeah, I was making change. I had to give a lot of uh, five cents change. Um, so I had to give a lot of people their nickel back. Yes, it, 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 it's not, um, you know, it's not the most sizzly story, but it is the most true one. I like reality more than sizzle. Okay, you're happy. And as for me, I am the fittest fat kid, you know, and you can find me at all the socials at fittest fat kid. Instagram at Fittest Fat Kid, Twitter at Fittest Fat Kid, Facebook the page is Fittest Fat Kid. Not no website yet, but I'm still working on that, and I will probably say that for the next ten episodes. But when it is there, it will be www.fittestfatkid.com. But if you've got a question, a concern, if you want to share your story with us, if you would like advice, if there's any way you would like a reach out, or we would like you to reach out to us. The email address is hi there at fittestfatkid.com. And seriously, if you are struggling with weight and you don't have anyone you feel you can talk to, you can talk to us. Now, if you're enjoying the podcast, please subscribe, give a comment, leave a rating. Do that on the YouTube channel, wherever else you might happen to enjoy me. Enjoy me there and say something about it because I would love the feedback. Anyway, so for my boy Mike, for my dogs, for the entire world of my ecosystem, hold yourself accountable, but do it with kindness and understanding, and I'll talk to you next week.